12 News Eye on Agriculture with Britton Rucker. Finally, movement and grain out of Ukraine. More on the impacts after Russia pulled out of the U.N. rubber deal over the summer and the impacts to the country. Plus, we're joined with Roger McOwen as we discuss buying farmland with a growing crop and how it presents unique tax issues. And right now we are closed for the 2023 Christmas season. Now, if you don't have your Christmas tree yet, you might want to find one right now as some tree farms are experiencing shortages this season. Find out why ahead on Eye on Agriculture. Good evening and welcome in to Eye on Agriculture. I'm Britton Rucker. The Kansas Wildfire Task Force is working to help fire departments respond better to emergencies. Firefighters in the town of Paradise are looking forward to the ideas from that task force. You may remember that area was hit hard by the four county fire just two years ago. The task force says it's working to pass a bill that would create funding for fire stations. Paradise firefighters say they hope the task force addresses all needs, not just money. We're short on people. All our people are getting older. Uh, I'm actually not near the oldest one around, and I'm 63. Instead of three guys on a truck, it might only be one guy on a truck. The fire task force hopes to use the bill to address recruitment and employee retention needs. The unit's goal is to get the proposed bill passed at the start of next year. Researchers at Kansas State University receive a $2 million grant to help enhance the safety of prescribed burning. The grant aims to help the university develop technology to make prescribed burning safer. The project will use data collected through satellite imagery, drones, and data sharing to develop the technologies. Additionally, they're working on fire behavior modeling, grassland fuel mapping, and hotspot detection. The Kansas Department of Agriculture will allocate $10 million in funding to several state water projects that will include dam rehabilitation and repairs and irrigation improvements. About $7 million of that funding will go towards projects in eastern Stafford County, where the Rattlesnake Creek and Quivira Wildlife Refuge have struggled with water flow. The remaining $3 million will go towards fixing privately owned high hazard dams. A look, it looks like grain movement out of Ukraine is starting to pick back up. The Associated Press reports an increasing number of ships are streaming towards Ukraine's Black Sea ports and then heading out with grain despite the threat of an attack. It comes after Russia pulled out of a U.N. broker deal over the summer that allowed food to flow safely from Ukraine during the war. Supply chain issues once again hitting the U.S. dairy industry. This time it's a shortage of milk cartons. The USDA issued a policy memo acknowledging that, quote, schools in multiple states are experiencing milk supply chain challenges related to packaging issues. Along with schools, a single-serve cartons are widely used by hospitals, nursing homes, and prisons. At the root of the issue appears to be a production backlog. The company has not offered an official explanation. History was made in the skies on Tuesday as a Virgin Atlantic passenger jet took off from London, powered by 100% sustainable aviation fuel. About eight hours later, the plane landed at New York's at JFK Airport. It's the first commercial airline to fly such a distance using only sustainable fuel. According to Virgin Atlantic, the fuel is made with cooking oil and waste from animal fat and corn. It's going to take a while before we can get enough fuel where, where every, everybody's going to be able to fly. But you've got to start somewhere. Um, and if we, you know, if, we di if we didn't prove it could be done, you know, that we, you, you, you would never, ever get sustainable aviation fuel. Experts say aviation accounts for more than 2% of global carbon emissions, and the governments around the world are beginning to require airlines use more sustainable fuels over the next decade. If you don't have your Christmas tree just yet, you might want to find one now. Some tree farms are experiencing some shortages this season due to changes in the industry and the dry weather. Our news partners at KCTV 5 in Kansas City has a story. Right now, we are closed for the 2023 Christmas season. In just eight days, Mike Hafner and his team sold more than 2,100 Christmas trees, which was all he had available, ready to be chopped down. 
all over the nation. He says farmers are experiencing similar shortages. A lot of the growers did not get a whole lot of growth, especially in those crucial months of May and June when those, those trees need to be growing and weren't receiving enough moisture. And I also do some business with a grower up in Michigan. He experienced the same thing. This year, Hafner is downsizing his Christmas tree business to pursue a new career which is another trend he sees creating a shortage as more growers leave the industry. What happened in 2008, a lot of folks got out and they have not gotten back in. Uh, I can tell you it's extremely difficult in order to get a contract right now to have Fraser Fur shipped. This year it only grew about that much. In Lenexa, George Hess estimates he has about 50 trees left on his farm that are in the proper stage to be sold off. This year I lost somewhere in the 20 to 30 seedlings didn't make it through the summer. Because Christmas trees take several years to grow to the ideal height for customers, Hess believes this shortage could drag on for years. When you compound the fact that it takes eight, ten years to grow a tree, that means, you know, eight, ten years ago there'll be, you know, that many less trees that'll be ready for harvest. That's exactly what we need to, to make progress. With Kansas seeing record snowfall after a snowstorm hits the state, farmers are reaping the benefits of the much-needed moisture. That's coming up on Ion Agriculture.